All Workadian deeply appreciated the Owl's help at the right time. For the conspirators, gathered in the middle of the forest, saw an owl flapping its wings and roaring, and thought that it was the noise that was caused by it. Ouch! This coton has scared us. Don't cut it! Said one. No. Save your knives for other important things. Sharpen them to slay our enemies with garlic. The owl and the coot are not our enemies, they are our allies. We are awake when men ordinarily sleep. The owls and coots are awake with us. Ravi Dasan said. Listening to his speech, Thirumali up and walked slowly and reached the vicinity of a big Merida tree. The huge roots of the hundred-year-old tree ran on all four sides. Between one peg and another there was a gap in the ground, the underside of the tree also had a good cavity. In one such hollow Alvarcadian stood leaning against the tree. As long as we have the treasure of the kingdom of Tanjavur, we have no shortage of material. We must have the courage to complete the task. We must have the power to keep the secret until the work is done. We must divide ourselves into two groups. One group should go to Sri Lanka immediately and the other group should go to Thantai Mandal and carry a Siddhai. You have to wait for the right time. Almost two things should be done at the same time. If you give time after finishing one enemy, another enemy will be cautious. You should not give time for that. Do you know? Who among you is ready to go to Sri Lanka? Said Ravi Dasan. I'm going, I'm going. Many voices heard at the same time. We can decide who is going next time in the Pandian country. Until then there are still some arrangements to be made here. Said Ravi Dasan. Which way is better to go to Elam? Asked one. You can go through Kadakare. It is a good way to cross the sea. But it is difficult to go from here to Kadakare. Enemies all along, spies here and there. Therefore it is better to go to Stha and cross the sea there and get down to Matadathukaru. People who go to Sri Lanka should know how to row a boat, push a log, and swim in the sea. Can you swim? I know and I know two voices rose up. First, we must see and talk to King Mahinda of Sri Lanka and then get down to business. So at least one of those going to Elam must know the Sinhala language. Ah! Our Saman Sambavan has not arrived yet? Has anyone seen him today? Here I come. All Workadian heard a voice from very recently. Adian also clung to the tree. Damn it! How embarrassing for this poor body to swell like this! Two new people joined the meeting. Alvarkadian stuck a small part of his face out of the tree and peered out. He came to know that the two new arrivals were the same people who had met and talked under the royal tree on the banks of the river. On seeing the new men, Ravi Dasan said, Come. Come. I was afraid that perhaps some danger had befallen you, or that you would not come, from where and by what means did you come? He said. We came along the coast, and a pack of jackals beckoned us along the way. It's time to get away from the jackals. Saman Sambavan said. There is meaning in fearing the tiger and the lion. What can those who fear the fox accomplish? Said one of those who had come before the meeting. Do not say so, father. A fox is worse than a lion or a tiger. For the lion and the tiger can fight and deal with enemies who rush separately. But the foxes come in groups, therefore, they are stronger. It was because of the multitude of the Chola foxes that our incomparable King Manity was defeated and lost his life. Otherwise, would that have happened? Let's destroy that foxhole. Let's destroy it with garlic. Saman Sambavan shouted with enthusiasm. Here's the equipment. Said Ravi Dasan pointing to the pile of gold coins. Saman Samhavan took some coins in his hand and looked at them and said, Ah! Tiger on one side. Palm on the other. He said that. Chola's gold, Palyavatara's seal. I have done as I said. What is your message? R.I. Tumpankari must have brought some news. Said Ravi Dasan. Yes, he has brought it, listen. He will tell. I Tumpankari started saying, According to your orders, 
I have been sitting and working as a servant in the Sambuvariyar mansion. The results of that have been seen only last night. Yesterday there was a big party in the Sambuvariyar mansion. There were many people like Pariya Palyavetarayar, Venangamudi Pundayarayar, Mazapati Malyavarayar, etc. What he said was in favour of our purpose. Everyone thought that his young queen had come in the Mudapalak that came with Palyavatare. Palyavatare informed that Sundara Chola Maharaja's health was not good and he would not live much longer. Together they all decided that Madhurandik Devar was not Aditha Kari Kalar but Madhurandik Devar. But some asked if Madhurandik Devar would agree to this. Saying I will make him reply to it by his own mouth, he opened the curtain of the closed palace. Madhurandak Devar came out of it. He said that he agreed to tie the title. They are going to behead a brave man who disguises himself as a woman. Well done, everything is going on as we expected. Such a disturbance in the Chola country is very conducive to our purpose. Whatever happens, no one will doubt us, will they? I tump and carry. You have brought a very important message. But how did you know all this? How did this happen? Ravi Dasan asked. When they met in the middle of the night, they put me on guard to see that no one else came near. I used my ears and eyes to keep watch. Do you know anything else that's used like that? It turns out that another strange man was watching everything that happened at that midnight meeting from the top of the castle wall. Ah! Who is he? A Vaishnava who had a Kutumi before. Aha! Is it him? I thought so. What did you do with him? Didn't you catch him and give him to Sam Bavariyar? No. I thought he might be ours. I thought you sent it yourself. You have made a big mess, he is not ours. He will be very short, the fighter's name is Thirumalay Appan, he will say Alvar Kadayan. He is. I realized my mistake this afternoon, he was not our man. How did you know that? Last night one of Kandan Moran's sexual friends had also come to the Kadampur mansion. It turned out that he had nothing to do with the gang of thieves. He lay there in the corner and slept soundly. This morning the little master came as far as call it Taker I with his Senekit. Knowing that he was coming, I often stood in front of him, he said. He returned along the north bank of Kala Dam. He told me to come to the south bank and earn a horse for a Valiban and return. From there I went to Kudanli and told him that I was leaving to see my aunt. That is why I was able to come here no doubt. Right, right. How did you know about that heroic Vaishnava? Just as the boat was about to depart from Kalitam, the valiant Vaishnava came and boarded the boat. From some harsh words he had spoken to Kandan Moran's friend, I had a slight suspicion that he was one of us. And he seemed to be waiting for me on the south bank of Kalitham. I made our intimate signal. But he did not understand. On that basis I decided that he is not ours. Or push into the flood and make the crocodile a hungry prey. Or make some excuse and take him to the top of the rock and from there grab him and kill him. If you see a scorpion, a cockroach, a snake, etc., kill them like you would mercilessly kill them. It is even more special if you sacrifice to Goddess Durga or Kanakiya man. As long as he's alive, he'll be a hindrance to our cause anyway. Ravi Dasar. He must be a great man to persuade you so far. Who? He's someone with terrible energy. Whose brother? I myself doubted it for a long time. I suspected it was either Sundara Chola's, or Aditya Karakalan's, I found it was not. Now I suspect that she is in the old room, a former Pataki, the great Bratis. Aha! Uh -huh. Really? Why is that champion goddess who is immersed in Shiva devotion and doing temple repairs? All that is a lie, just as the heroic Vyashnavism of this former householder is an outer guise, so is the Shiv Bhakti of the old queen. Isn't she the devil who is the greatest enemy of her own child? That's why even her own brother Malavarian has fought with her and joined the Palyavetarayan party. Ravita Ser is there anyone else like that Kutumi Vaishnava? There is a soothsayer in Kudani. I doubt his name too. 
he speaks as if he were divination to those who go, and keeps his mouth shut and knows many things. None of you should go to him, if you do, you will surely be deceived. Whose brother do you think he is? I have not been able to find it yet. Perhaps it is the son of a false prince who is now in Ceylon. But I am not so anxious about Josian. He will do no great harm. I am afraid of the Vaishnava. Where he is found, he must be killed as mercilessly as a scorpion, a nut, or a snake. All were Kadayan, who was listening to all this from the cover of the Merida tree, shuddered, the whole body was sweating. He doubted whether he was going to escape alive from under that tree. As if that was not enough, he sneezed at the sight. Couldn't contain it. He put the cloth in his mouth and sneezed. At that time the upper wind had stopped, the rustling of the forest trees had also stopped. Therefore, Thirumalayapan's suppressed sneeze was slightly heard by the conspirators who were talking nearby. Ravi Dasan said, There is a sound behind that Merida tree. Go and see what's going on with Kolund. The sprained man came looking for the tree. As he came closer, the light grew brighter. Ouch! Here he is going back to the tree trunk. As soon as he turns back, the light is going to fall on him. What happens then? Punner Janmanthan if he survives. Thirumalayapan's chest was heaving. He looked around to see if there was any way to escape, missing the way. He looked up, there was a giant bat hanging upside down on a tree branch that had split from the tree. An idea immediately struck. He suddenly reached up and grabbed the bat and kept it ready in his hand. When the gobbler got past the tree, he threw the bat at his face. Cramped down and the light faded. He who was struck in the face by the bat's wing, cried out, Ah! Ah! What? What? He muttered. I heard many people running. Alvarkadian also ran, the next moment he disappeared into the thick forest. Many people shouted together, What? What? The crippled man began to narrate the details of the attack on him by the bat. All this was heard by Thirumalayapan's ears at some distance. 